From the backstretch at Saratoga, this is Loose on the Lead with Steve Bick and Seth Merrill. Loose on the Lead is sponsored by... Good morning. Welcome to Loose on the Lead on this Sunday morning, the day after, day after the Hall of Fame Coaching Club American Oaks up here in Saratoga, the day after the Haskell and multiple other stakes down at Monmouth. Usually uh, live on the set with me, Steve Bick, but today he's on the shore down in Jersey. He was at the uh, Haskell for uh, at Monmouth for the Haskell and the other stakes uh, yesterday. Steve, good morning. Good morning. Right from, right from Long Ranch, looking at the ocean. That's what we like to hear. Um, and at the top of the show, I have to tip my hat and give you congratulations uh, and uh, alert the, the audience. You are the winner of the uh, Bill Handel Memorial Award for your coverage of the uh, Haskell card last year. And so congratulations on the award. I appreciate it. It, it really meant a lot. Bill Handelman was a phenomenal fourth writer uh, who died very young, too. And Handelman was an institution down here and in press boxes at the Triple Crown and, and Breeders Cup. Uh, he was with the Asbury Park Press, and he's a guy that managed to, you know, keep Monmouth and racing on the front page of the, the whole paper, not just the sports section. And, uh, Bill Handelman closely associated with, with Monmouth, and it's one of my favorite places when I lived down here in Brielle years ago. It was the first week I could attend regularly. And coming down here, I, I, people have heard me talk about this before. We, on Haskell's uh, recap set, or you know, a lot of times when the Haskell's on a Sunday, we would, you know, we would preview it together. Uh, it, Monmouth is a magical place, and uh, anybody that's not been, you, you got to make an attempt. And especially, you know, for those that are going to miss their COVID this summer, you can go to Monmouth. Uh, it's, it's, it's not big crowds, not as much as they were hoping. They're hoping for 15,000 a day. Uh, and the state is kind of holding it down to about 3,000, 3,500. Uh, but still, if you want a summer experience this season, Monmouth is the place for you. And uh, I just love coming down here. We'll talk a little bit about the, the day yesterday and the crowd because you sent some photos. I think the guys can, can pop those up, you and the lovely Tina, the M- Mrs. Bick uh, down for the day. But I also noted, you know, there's some pictures of the atmosphere and whatnot, so talk about that. But I also noticed, hey, the Bo Brummel of the racetrack, as Vic Zast labeled you years ago, you were kind of casual yesterday. I, I, I discussed it with Tina before we headed over to the track. I said, you know, I, I said, I, I, I In the jacket and pants, and I just thought this is this is stupid. It is, you know, first of all, it was a just a idyllic day. Uh, you know, high eighties and, and a little bit of a shore breeze, so it was a, it was really comfortable. But uh, I thought, you know what? If, if, if people are going to see me in a, in a short sleeve shirt, and, you know, linen slacks and and uh, jeans. Today's the day. So, yeah, we went casual, and it was the right choice. Uh, you know, it, 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 honestly, one of the things I thought to myself was that even with that smattering of people, and there's that picture of, of the beautiful grandstand with the banners hanging down, and, and a couple of pictures there around the paddock, the base of the heat, and on the uh, track apron, it, I'm not sure that the Saratoga scenario on a big day where nobody could really come. I mean, we're going to have some owners, but this was this was really bittersweet because yeah, this could have been the day when there's 50, 55,000 in that building, and, that, and that's a big property. Uh, and Monmouth spreads people out, and it's, it's perfectly, and it's not Belmont, but people spread out, and when the place is busy on Haskell Day, it's great. It, it was nice that there were people there that got to enjoy it, and they had a great business day. I think frankly, for them to break the record that they did on National Day, you know, they, they were going up against the American Bowl cards, and uh, they have to be thrilled with the 19 million that they did. Uh, and, and it was a fabulous card, and the racing was spectacular. So, uh, it, in a lot of ways, it, it couldn't have been better uh, unless there had been a full conference of 50,000. 
Nice. And, uh, you, you know, as you say, fans are allowed down there, limited basis, but it was nice to, to see that on their big day uh, some of the fans did get to get in and enjoy uh, the action. And let's talk a little bit about some of the action. Let's go right uh, to the Haskell and kind of work our way from there. The Haskell yesterday, obviously authentic for uh, Bob Baffert, was going to attract a lot of attention. He did as the 3-5 to five favorite. But as we watched them uh, come down the stretch in the Haskell, New York traffic gave him all he could ask for. The chart margin here winds up to be a nose, but Authentic and Mike Smith do get it done. New York traffic second, number one. Dr. Post runs third in here. Talk a little bit about the performance for from the Baffert horse in the Haskell. Well, uh, Baffert wins the Haskell for, what, the, the, <laughs> I don't know, 10th time? I don't know to keep track. Uh, this horse doesn't want to go a step past nine furlongs. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I, I see some of the people involved, you know, talking about, oh, it's Derby, Derby. Uh, no, uh, you, you want to be thinking, you know, Alan Jerkins or Pat Day Miles. This is not, this is not a mile and a quarter horse, at least based on what we saw. He is lightly race built. And, uh, you know, Mike Smith talked about uh, the kind of a little bit of greenness down the stretch when he hit him. Left-handed, he ducked uh, in, but he hit him with a right hand, he ducked out. You know, he he may have been reacting to some things that, that may be some greenness, but boy, uh, it was all fit to do to kind of gather him up and will him to the wire. And New York traffic, you know, seemed like he was pretty much done, you know, between the 8th and the 16th. And, and then his, his authentic was either losing focus or just simply, you know, running out of pedigree. Did we lose Steve? I think we lost Steve there. Uh, so we will we will attempt to uh, reconnect. Um, I was just checking. It sounded like there was something back in my ear, but uh, um, it has disappeared. So we will try to reconnect with Steve again down on the shore after spending uh, the day down at Monmouth for Haskell Day. And as he said, there are uh, limited fans down there, but uh, nice to know that some fans were able to enjoy the day. I'm being told, Steve, you back? Yeah, I guess. And, yeah, we and, lost you for a second there. Uh, but continue. Authentic. Uh, do, do you uh, you say won't go a step beyond a mile and an eighth, but at this point, uh, don't they ha- have to consider the derby? I mean, uh, you have a three-year-old, oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's sitting up near the top of the class at this point anyway. Well, he, to me, he's not, you know, I'd honor a deep his law and, uh, and uh, art collector, I, I think they're all better yeah. derby prospects. Uh, but uh, I, I suppose they, I suppose they will. I mean, why would you this point after this win? But uh, I, I, I wouldn't be running. You know, the, today he's got the, the derby future wager. I, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be selling the filter uh, <laughs> to bet on him. I, I, I you know. Uh, there were more questions. There was more questions about him after this race than, than you know, than before. Uh, but I, I, a lot of people, Jay Turkman has said for months that he didn't think this was a horse that wanted, you know, much past a mile and an eight. So we'll see. Uh, Let's uh, pop over to the Molly pitcher, and uh, this one's interesting because a little bit later on we'll be joined by Riley Mott, the assistant to uh, trainer Bill Mott. Of course, he won yesterday's Coaching Club American Oaks here, but yesterday's Molly pitcher, horologist. Uh, He wins with that one, the number 11 horse, chart margin of a couple of lengths, uh, mutual of $9 and change. Our super freak runs second. Royal Flag runs third, but Jersey Joe Bravo and Horologist getting it done for Bill Mott on down on the shore in the Molly Pitcher. What were your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, I want I, I checked with uh, Scott Blasey and uh, she's a Julie. I know people were worried, but she's a Julie. Something might have gone wrong uh, this morning. Everything appears to be okay with her, so I want to slip that in first of all. A Horologist story is kind of nice uh, and sad too. John Mazza, who of course uh, passed away a couple of months ago, an institution down here in the Jersey racing. And uh, this is a uh, this is a filly that comes back home and only reinforces the whole concept of, of you know, a horse for course. And it's really quite remarkable actually. Uh, it comes home and, and on paper, well on paper she was about third or fourth best coming into this. Uh, so, so she loves that race track and this is a tremendous week for her. 
And you, you mentioned uh, the one off. Sharif uh, Rabot has now finished second in, I think, three of the last four great stakes that she has competed in going back to Churchill and their state. And Cherie is, you know, really you know, kind of very quietly uh, humming along nicely. So well done to Cherie Devoe. Yeah, she kind of, uh, last couple of months, uh, she's been notable uh, at the various venues she's been racing at. All right, let's move a little earlier on the card. Another grade one event, the United Nations. We'll take a look at the stretch run here. Jersey Joe does it again on number five, Aquaphobia for uh, Mike Maker. Uh, mutual of $23.40. Uh, Perrette, uh, number nine, runs second at 10 to one. Corelli runs third. At uh, six to one, the favorite Arklo at six to five winds up a little bit of a disappointing fourth in here. Your thoughts on aquaphobia in the United Nations? Well, I, I got to say, I mean, for those that are uh, involved in the contest for running with the NCRA, the beat pick contest, I made parade uh, the you know, my choice, and we had him in, in the pillar at one, and so I went right back to him. He ran a courageous race here. And really did all the heavy lifting, uh, and you know, looked at the horses that tried to, you know, to, to, to score less that were chasing, you know, ended so oh, Dionysus ended at the bottom of the chart, etc. Uh, the aquaphobia, I don't know what to say about Mike Baker doing this over and over and over again with older horses that use towards these turf marathons. It, it's stunning. It's amazing. And, and you know, one thing to do it with a turf horse, it does it with nerve horses, too. It, it, I mean, it's been going on years now. Uh, and, you know, I'll include included aquaphobia, but, uh, you know, I thought Durant was the, was the right horse. Standard deviation was a huge disappointment in here. Uh, the board actually was a little bit of a story uh, because Corelli took money and current was ice cold. I don't it on the board. Ends up at you know, over nine to one, and it was kind of uh, it was kind of shocked that I didn't for it, but I still I didn't expect them to be completely ignored in the betting. Uh, and uh, Paradise Farm and Hooties and you know the, the group of people that you know that trust uh, Michael Gray, uh, you know uh, has has done this successfully with high price claims and private purchases. And, and Mike Baker, who was there by the way, Baker was. Was that promise yesterday? Uh, and then I talked to Chuck Curry back to the race. Chuck was, Chuck was hard sick uh, for Perez to get caught like that. But Joe Bravo uh, had really a, a nice ride, you know, letting the speed kind of unfold and then, you know, then lurching forward at just the right time. Uh, and that, 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 that story actually was the same uh, earlier uh, in the match maker. Same kind, same kind of slick effort uh, in there by far just. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I, I, I really was a little, I, I, I've got Perrette pretty seriously and uh, kind of keyed a lot of things through a tough feed on that front. But uh, today, by the way, in the Lake Classic, that'll be our beat pick contest uh, race today, uh, ncra.com slash beat pick, and you go through the summer, get qualified once, and you win the championship at the end of the summer for a seat to Vegas. So, I was going to say, can I play? I may jump in. I think I, ju- I was playing last. I was playing last year. That's right. I'm in. I'm in. Nice. All right. Uh, let's move on to the Monmouth Cup. A little bit earlier on the card, the winner is going to be uh, Global Campaign. Uh, part of another another part of the nice day for Windstar. Uh, this one trained by Stanley Huff. Global Campaign, the number one horse here. Math Wizard, the number five, runs uh, second, and Bal Harbor runs third. But it was Global Campaign is the favorite. Kind of a lukewarm favorite, though. Paid seven bucks. Uh, your thoughts on the Monmouth Cup and Global Campaign? Well, I think to the uh, I think the picture right before post five and all the around on the track. I sent the picture uh, of crazy enigmatic Odin Spring, and he was giving Daniel Centeno so much trouble, uh, just you know throwing his head and. and Sort of fucking, and you, you, this horse is the most crazy storyline. I think he was in the hit this uh, they put them in the same camp, but he gets scratched at the gate, and that really changed the complexion of the fight. Because he would have been part of the base, 
uh, and said global campaign who got back to the group. I mean, he did. At one point, he was like six to five, and he didn't plan to do But only in the betting, he was even money. And in fact, I was, uh, Nick Cameron and I were, were texting back and forth for this. And sure enough, they knew, I guess, uh, as, as Andy likes to say. Uh, but Vargas uh, uh, kind of moved the other campaign around, and when it looked like they were kind of holding him, well, he had a little extra. He got headed. And came back. Uh, nice performance, and you know, certainly, certainly always happy when Stanley Huff does well. And, uh, all right, let's finally move on to the matchmaker. You mentioned it a little bit earlier, grade three event. Um, they were going a mile and an eighth on the grass, and uh, the winner here will be Nay Lady Nay, the number six source. It's Chad Brown, Paco Lopez on board, chart margin a half a length uh, as the two-to-one favorite. Beautiful Lover second, F- Field Glorious runs third, but Nay Lady Nay, uh, nice closing effort in the stretch to get it done in the matchmaker. Oh, I think we may have lost Steve again. Uh, actually, we can just go with the, the replay here, and then I'll jump into the uh, uh, Saratoga Stakes races because uh, it's going to time out fine. So we're good. We'll, uh, we'll, we will bid adieu to Mr. Bick uh, rather than uh, try to connect again uh, because we were having some phone issues. So, uh, again, thanks to Steve Bick. And congratulations to Steve again for winning the, the uh, Bill Handelman Memorial Award uh, for his coverage of the Haskell last year but he was down yesterday and, and again nice that they had some fans at least some fans a lot on the track uh down there on a you know they're clearly their very big day so uh nice day down at uh, monmouth for yesterday's haskell let's go now to uh replays of the two stakes races here at saratoga because we talked about it a little bit earlier on the handicapper support this performance from uh decorated invader yesterday in the uh the hall of fame boy this is just a nice horse because got smoking was clearly the speed and you have speed in a scratch reduced field of five that horse becomes very dangerous and at one point point on the chart got some get smoking is seven lengths uh, out in front so now decorated invader the number seven has to reel him in and he does Subsequently, on the outside, domestic spending looks to be making a, a move and have some real momentum. And you think, uh oh, maybe get run down here. But just about the point where you think that uh, decorated invaders kind of kicks in there. And boy, just a nice performance from decorated invader. Again, a three year old on the turf in this subdivision that I like quite a bit. And he is clearly the leader of that subdivision at this point. I mean, uh, three year olds on the turf, he is. He is the one, and he's had a, a, a phenomenal career overall, but a very good season this year, certainly, with the win to kick things off in the Cutler Bay, an ungraded stake down at Gulfstream. That was a nice come-from-behind victory. It was a little closer to the pace last time in the Penine Ridge down at Belmont, the last time before yesterday, a uh, grade two event, and won that pretty easily, and now comes back in the grade two Hall of Fame, and again, Puts a nice little chart margin there of a uh, length and a quarter. I did not see the buyer for uh, Decorated Invader, but you would have to think it'll be legit. And just, again, uh, for three-year-old turfers, he's the one right now. So it'll be fun to watch him uh, as the year continues. All right, let's also take a look at yesterday's uh, Coaching Club American Oaks. We'll take a look at it in a little bit as well with Riley Mott. And, again, he'll join us in a few, the uh, assistant to his dad, trainer Bill Mott, but they won yesterday's coaching club American Oaks with Paris Lights. I like Paris Lights. I mean, Toneless Shape was going to take a lot of action, deservedly so, but I thought uh, Paris Lights being lightly raced may still have some upside potential, so I put that one on top, and boy, it it is a ding-dong battle down the stretch for uh, uh, Paris Lights with Crystal Ball. And again, Crystal Ball came in from the West Coast for Bill, uh, Bob Baffert. But as you can see, Cap's different, but the Silks are the same. Both Windstar horses. So it was a Windstar battle down the lane here. On the inside is uh, Crystal Ball. On the outside is Paris Lights. 
and she just pulls away the chart margin at the end ahead, but she would not be beaten. I mean, the last, you know, 75 yards or so, she had that head in front and just steadily, steadily kept it there, keeping Crystal Ball at bay. Antoinette ran third. Tonalist Shape runs fourth. A little bit of a disappointing fourth as the 6-5 to five favorite. Only the second blemish on her career, but Paris Lights, uh, that was... That was some good-looking performance uh, to uh, get it done in the Coaching Club American Oaks. A couple of minutes from now, we're going to have uh, some comments after the race from uh, Bill Mott just outside the winner's circle, who says, you know, as you would expect, they're going to take a look at the uh, the Alabama for uh, Paris Lights. But a nice performance. Both stakes races, nice performances in different fashions. Uh, decorated Invader, I thought. Had to chase that early pace, got the lead. Somebody came late. You know, it was a, it was a, a nice performance that, that had a little, little bit of an open length kind of a victory at the end. Whereas Paris Lights had to kind of dig in, ding dong battle, and as I say, just a uh, never say get beaten performance down the lane to get it done. Uh, and as again, very lightly raced. That was uh, only her fourth career start, first start in stakes company. She se- steps into stakes company. In grade one fashion. So as I say, we'll talk a little bit later with Riley Mott about that one as well. All right. After yesterday, the uh, Kentucky Derby leaderboard has been updated. Tis the law still, as far as the points list, tis the law still on top with 272 points. But Authentic yesterday moved into the second spot with 200 points. New York Traffic moves into the fourth spot with 110. Honor AP has 120 uh, in the third spot, Art Collector fifth, King Guillermo sixth. Dr. Post yesterday moved into the seventh spot with uh, 80 points. And these are notable because you would think that these top 10 horses have enough points to, to get in. They're, they're good to go. Some other po- horses a little further down will still be looking for the points races that are remaining. Ete Indian is eighth, Modernist ninth, Mischievous Alex is uh, 10th with 50 points. Country Grammar, 11th with 50 points. That one's raced the other day. Uh, and again, 50 points, probably good enough. Um, so that one's raced the other day was notable as well. And currently, I'm just looking to see what the points races are that are remaining. So it's really a fairly limited uh, amount of points races. Yesterday's Haskell uh, awarded 100 points to the winner, Authentic. And we have one more 100-point race left, 100 points to the winner. That's going to be the Travers. Delmar has the shared belief coming up on August 1st. That's worth 50 points to the winner. Then the Travers on August 8th. That's worth 100 points. The Ellis Park Derby. That that'll, I think that will get a nice field of maybe some... You know, we'll have the first stringers, I would think, up here for the Travers. Uh, you may get some kind of second stringers and some horses who say, man, I'm going to take a shot for that 50 points, go to Ellis on uh, August 9th, day after the Travers. And then the Pegasus down at Monmouth offers 20 points. I don't. That's one that you just have to see how it plays out. There may be a horse that's kind of on the bubble, and that 20 points would make a difference. Um, but 20 points is not... You know, it's not enough to get somebody in if they're down in the, you know, territory where they really need something. But as I say, 20 points, and it's August 15th, and there's a horse out there, and the connections are saying, you know what, that 20 points gets us in. They may take a shot. But for for the most part, there are three races left, the uh, Shared Belief at Del Mar, the Travers, and the Ellis Park Derby that, are, that will play into Derby points, definitely getting uh, horses high enough on the list to plug them into the field. So, uh uh keep our eyes open for those all right i'm gonna head to the break now but as promised uh as we go to the break uh yesterday outside the winner's circle trainer bill mott was commenting about paris lights and the win in the uh, coaching club american oaks also talked a little bit about how strange it is up here this year with no fans he had a funny comment there and uh a little bit more Again, yesterday, just outside the winner's circle with trainer Bill Mott. We'll go to that break, and we will be joined by Bill's assistant, his uh, son, Riley Mott. All of that right after this. Stay tuned. Fought hard. I mean, they both fought hard, but the other filly, the filly that finished second, really, really, you know, she dug in. And, uh, you know, we we were the best. Uh, you know, our filly was 
the best one today, and, and uh, I was very proud of it. What about your confidence in her jumping from the allowance to the grade one? Well, I think the fact that we had another allowance race in her at Churchill, we, you know, she broke her maiden and then we were able to get a, another allowance race in her for experience and, and you know, build on yeah. that experience a little bit and on, on her confidence level and, and it paid off and, and here we are today. You've won a lot of races up here, but probably none quite like this one before. What's it like to win a race at an empty Saratoga? It, it, you know, it's it's uh, one of the guards at the gate a couple of days ago explained it to me. We were looking around and it was kind of, you know, very quiet. And, and you know, we were talking about the, how it felt to be here. He said, it's like somebody giving you a great big plate of tofu. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I think it's, you know, that's probably the best way to explain it. But we're glad to be here and we're glad to have that plate of tofu. So, uh, you know, but the, ma the main thing is, is the horses and, and bringing them along. And I mean, you know, they, you know, being able to run, I think is, is something that, all the horsemen are grateful for because you know we don't we don't want to have to shut down our entire operation. So uh, the fact that we're here and, and we're in business, I think we're we're very happy about that. Would the Alabama be something you look at now? I would think so. Sure, I, I don't see any reason we wouldn't make that as a major potential goal. How good do you think this filly can become? Well, I don't know. I mean, she's you know one or last three and and uh she you know i mean she didn't draw away by 10 today or anything i mean you know you're not going to call her ruffian just yet but uh you know i'd say she's a, a pretty you know uh, accomplished filly for the lack of seasoning that she's got what do you get what does she get out of someone this one that, that she has to fight for it? well i mean that just it, it, it what she gets is gains our confidence that she's got you know she's got some grit and she's got some quality well, you know, the odd thing about it is they're both wearing the same colors for the same stable. And I said, well, wouldn't that be cute if we got beat by, you know, uh, one of the, uh, you know, by one of the stable mates, but in, and possibly set it up for somebody from behind, but it didn't work out that way. And uh, she was, you know, they, they looked like they were the best two in the race today. Welcome to Albany County, an incredible destination to live, work, and play with easy connections to more than a dozen cities from our vibrant modern airport. It's a short trip downtown to a hive of culture and amusement from world-class shows at the newly renovated Times Union Center to reliving the past at the New York State Museum. From outdoor recreation to shopping to nightlife, Albany County has something for everyone. We'll see you soon. What if there was a way to become a better horse player, to have a better knowledge of the game, to be more successful? What if there were a way to take what you've learned, what you know, and make better decisions, better choices? In horse racing, knowledge is a powerful tool. Race results and replays, past performances and live streaming, wagering from all your digital devices. Capital OTB, become a better horse player. Stone is an outside threat. They're coming down to the finish. Can Smarty Jones hold on? Here comes Birdstone. Birdstone surges past. Birdstone wins the Belmont Stakes. It's in front, but here comes High Chaparral. High Chaparral, the defending champ, to take it to Paul Brown. These two arch rivals hang ahead with Joe Hart bearing down on them. It's going to be a three horse photo finish in the turn. Here's the wire. Photo finish. Welcome back to Loose on the Lead on this Sunday morning live from Saratoga, the day after the Coaching Club American Oaks. And I thought we'd reach out to the connections of uh, the winner, Paris Lights. We'll talk about that in a few. But uh, assistant to trainer Bill Mott, his son, Riley Mott. Riley, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Happy to have you on. And uh, talk a little Coaching Club American Oaks in a few. And we've got some other horses that uh, we may show up here as the meet goes along. So we, I thought we'd hit on those as well. But before we do that, just wanted to talk a little bit about everybody the last month or so I've had on. I've talked a little bit about the shutdown period and how it affected uh, the operation and whatnot. And just as I was reading last night, you kind of got caught up right at the beginning of it. Weren't you overseas with, with Tacitus kind of when this all fell, fell down a little bit? Yes, we started in Saudi Arabia in February. Uh, after that race, went to Dubai in March, spent 
almost the whole month there. Uh, a week away from the race, they said they're nixing the, the race card on World Cup night, and they told us we had 48 hours to get out of the country. So it was a bit of a scramble. We knew, you know, everything was going on, you know, internationally with COVID and everything like that. But until they canceled the World Cup and you were sort of uh, under the gun to get home, yeah, it didn't really hit you until that point. Yeah, it was a crazy situation, and being overseas uh, just kind of added to that. But uh, then once you got back here, uh, fill us in a little bit about how, how the situation maybe affected you. I, I'm assuming you were probably down in Florida, which, you know, luckily for the racing industry, they, they kind of kept going very well. Mm -hmm. Gulfstream, Tampa, Oakland, Will Rogers, uh, Foner, but Gulfstream was one of the places that kept going. So I'm assuming uh, you, you were still kind of chugging away, but how, how were things a little bit different during the period? Yeah, I mean, we're extremely lucky, um, you know, on our side of the industry to, you know, wake up every morning and go take care of the horses and um, still earn a paycheck. And, um, you know, we were pretty much secluded at Payson Park from, you know, the rest of the industry and, um, you know, other, uh, you know, the other, you know, people in the public. And it's sort of out by itself, you know, 20 minutes away from everything. And, um, you know, it, it was a good place to be for us. And, and the training was great. It didn't get too hot down there in, in May. So um, for us, it could have been worse. But you know, we know there's certainly a lot of other people that didn't have it as, as well as we had. Talk a little bit about the, the nuts and bolts now. Uh, we just watched the replay uh, a few minutes ago, a horologist and the Molly pitcher. And talk a little bit about shipping. We had George Weaver in last Sunday, and he was saying, you know, with the rules and restrictions, a, a lot of the places you're just kind of shipping to a trainer you know at another place, and they'll saddle up and take care of uh, the horse if if you don't have connections already down there. But how is the shipping working out for you guys? Well, I mean, in regards to yesterday going to Monmouth, it was quite easy for us. I have a good friend who's assistant to Jonathan Thomas, uh, who is based there in Monmouth, and we just shipped right into his barn, and, and they ran the horse for us. So, uh, you know, it was pretty simple on our end. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of people are, are not going, you know, due to the shipping restrictions, and uh, a lot of people aren't coming to New York for the same reasons. So, um, you know, it, it's... You know, a little different this year, but you know we're making do, and uh, we're you know we're just thankful that Monmouth and Naira and everyone they're you know working so hard behind the scenes to have race meets. I yeah, talk a little bit about the win by Herald just yesterday. It was great. You know, we uh, got the filly a month and a half ago or two months ago uh, from California, and she was slightly off form. Might not have really loved the track out there, um, so the ownership group wanted to bring her east. Um, particularly for Monmouth Park, who you know she had never lost there. And, yeah, five for um, five now. Yeah, we, yeah, that's that's a, maybe they'll name a race after her one day. Who knows? But um, yeah, the the owners really wanted to point for the Molly pitcher, and the filly was doing great going into it. And uh, you know, Joe Bravo worked out a great trip from the eleven hole, and she she won with a very good number. So. Uh, you know, that was, you know, very nice to see. Yeah, uh, good day all around yesterday. And let's move over to uh, Coaching Club American Oaks uh, here at Saratoga. We'll, we'll pick them coming right out of the gate. Uh, Paris Light's the number six horse. Uh, and really, it was a duel most of the trip with uh, what Byron Stablemate, owner uh, <laughs> Stablemate, as it were, two Windstar horses, the Bob Baffert Crystal Ball number five. And then when they get in the lane, it is a real duel. Uh, your dad also, uh, Antoinette, finished third in here, the number two horse. Uh, Toneless Shape, the favorite, winds up fourth. But talk a little bit about the performance from Paris Lights. Given that she's so lightly raced, steps up in her fourth career start, this is a grade one event. And as I say, this I mean, you had to come out of this feeling like you've got a, a special horse because fourth career start, grade one event, and this is a gutsy effort. When they get into the lane and it becomes a ding-dong battle, she says, I'm not going to lose. Sure. And, you know, it, it's funny. In the last week of April, she was an unraced maiden. <laughs> and now, mid-July, she's a great, great one at Saratoga. So it's it's amazing. And, you know, we've always thought a lot of her. We had to stop on her about this time last year as a two-year-old. But prior to her vacation, we really thought a lot of her. You know, she was working quite well, just her whole demeanor really exuded class. So um, we knew she was a bit different and to have her come back at Payson with us down in Florida and uh, do as well as she did leading up to her first career starts was nice to see. And I mean, this, you know, I guess by winning, you know, in Maiden Allowance Company and 
you know, hey, other than company by open lengths is one thing, but to, you know, gut it out for three-eighths of a mile with, you know, some quality horses is another thing. So, it's, um, you know, it was quite impressive on her part, and, and hopefully we can build on that. And as I said, they come down the lane here, and it, it is a ding-dong battle, which, you know, you just love to see this from a horse, where she gets to the point where she says, yeah, Nate, you're not going by, forget it. And, and so... Uh, your father said after the race, uh, kind of thinking about the Alabama, obviously coming out of the coaching club American Oaks, which would be incredible in uh, you know her fifth career start mm -hmm. to step up to that kind of a situation. But have you seen her this morning? How'd she come out of the race? Uh, I did not see her this morning. I'm based on, on the harness track with 20 head of horses there, so I'll see her probably after this interview. But haven't heard any negative reports yet, and um, she's taken all of her races quite well. So you know, hopefully she comes out well, and we can push on and. The Alabama is obviously, you know, one of the most prestigious races in the country, and uh, it's it's one we always would love to point to if we have a prospect. Yeah. So it's very exciting for us, and of course the ownership group. You know, it's a it's a big, you know, partnership that Windstar put together, and you know, to have those two fillies come down to the wire, it's, it's a thrilling for them, and and hopefully. Uh, you know, they can meet again one day. Yeah, nice wind star exact in there, but it was Paris Lights on top. Tyler Gaffleone on board, uh, gave the horse a nice ride, and I, I think he's going to have a fun meet up here. Sure, I mean, Tyler's great for such a young kid. He's got a lot of uh, experience in top races, and he, he looks good on a horse, and, and uh, he's a strong finisher, and certainly fits our filly well. He's put her in, you know, good position, you know, all four times he's ridden her, so... Uh, you know, he's obviously got a bright future, and, he, and he's already had a fantastic yeah. career. Yeah, I mean, this is, I, I said at the beginning of the meet, he'd be one to watch off the great uh, Kentucky he had to Churchill and Keeneland, and he starts it off with a great one uh, victory in the coaching club American Oaks. As I said at the beginning, wanted to touch on a couple other uh, runners because they may have some Saratoga races in the future, and one of those is Frank's Rockette. I uh, want to go back to July 4th, the victory ride. We're going to watch Frank's Rocket, the number one horse, getting it done. Chart margin ahead as the uh, chalky favor. $2.90 was the mutual. Gets it done by the chart margin of ahead after having led all the way around under John Velasquez. Uh, this is a nice three-year-old filly. Uh, now uh, four wins, four seconds in eight career starts. And I'm guessing, talk a little bit about this race, how she came out of it, but I'm guessing the, the test may be... Uh, in the future for her. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, it was obviously a gutty performance. I mean, she had to give everything she had. Um, and so, you know, you don't want to do too much with her too soon after the race. So, um, you know, she did bounce back well. And, you know, the test is obviously the goal. Seven eighths, you know, she's run well going a mile, uh, well going seven eighths. So um, it should be within her scope. Um, she's, I would say, you know, six furlongs is probably a little more preferable than seven eighths, but she's definitely earned a shot in that race coming up. And, um, you know, there's something to be said about being talented, but being as consistent as she's been, you know, never been out of the exact, that, that says a lot about her. You know. I will say that is a tough division this year, the three-year-old Philly sprinters. Sure. I mean, you know, she, she ran a bang up race at Oakland, lost to a really nice Wesley Ward Philly and Kamari. Yeah. Who, then finished second at Ascot, so that form has held up. Um, and, uh, you know, there's definitely some other players in the division, so it should be a fun rest of the year, hopefully. Yeah, you, you win a race like it, the test, though. That's a, you know, not a great one on the Saratoga calendar. That looks uh, pretty good on the resume. Speaking of good on the resume and potential uh, Saratoga races, wanted to uh, also look from July 4th at Tacitus getting it done in the Suburban. Tacitus will be the number one horse here under John Velasquez. This was a nice win for this one. Moretti second, Persimony uh, runs third, but a nice win for Tacitus. As you say, a little bit earlier this year, this one was overseas, um, but came back and uh, got it done here in the uh, Suburban. And so I would think something is on the, the agenda for up here at Saratoga. Sure. I mean, you have the, the major grade ones for, uh, you know, older horses going long here. And, um, you know, he came out of the race great. He actually worked this morning uh, over on Oklahoma which I wasn't there for, but, um, you know, the horse looks great after coming out of this race, and he came up, you know, from Belmont a week or so ago. And uh, to see him, you know, put in a performance like that, he's never... Yeah, I was going to say, chart margin of almost nine lengths. Were you expecting that? Not necessarily. I mean, <laughs> I know was... it wasn't probably the strongest field he's faced, um, but the way he did it, you know, the way he, Johnny looked loaded turning for home, 
he's never quite run like that. I mean, he's more workmanlike, and he doesn't really have that flash of brilliance, but still having you know a lot of quality. Um, so that was great to see, and, and hopefully you know it can lead to him performing well going forward. Yeah, it's certainly gonna again look for him up here. Another one you and I were talking before we went on the air, and I said. I don't know. Is she up here? Is she uh, down at uh, Churchill? But Harvey's little Goyle is up here, and so give us a little update on her. We're going to watch The Regret from June 27th. Harvey's little Goyle will be the uh, number 10 horse in here. 11-1, to 1, but guts it out down the lane to win by a head. This was a nice performance in a field of 13, which makes it even more special. Um, and she's kind of turf, dirt. You can go either direction with her. What uh, You said she's up here. What's up next for Harvey's Little Goyle? Uh, well, they have the big three-year-old turf filly race coming up. Um, Saratoga Oaks. Saratoga Oaks. And that's certainly what we're pointing for right now. The number from the regret came back really strong. Um, obviously a pretty nice performance. And, you know, Graham's filly was second, was coming off a nice race. Um, you know, Harvey, we've always thought quite a bit of her as well. Um, you know, she obviously won a couple races on the dirt quite impressively. Um, she works good on the dirt. You know, she's worked good on the grass, and that's what sort of prompted us to run in the regret because there wasn't really much going along for three-year-olds fillies on the dirt at that time. Um, so, you know, while we're not married to staying on the turf with her, um, I believe that's the next logical spot. Um, but certainly if there were ever a nice dirt race, you know, coming up, we wouldn't be afraid to put yeah. it in the mix. It's always nice to have a horse like this where you have those kind of options. Makes us makes our job pretty easy. <laughs> that's for sure. uh, you've mentioned a couple of times the figures. Well, which numbers do you guys look at? Um, I look at a lot of thorough manager numbers, and you know, I, I when I first got into racing, I, I just started learning everything I could about the racing form. So naturally, like the buyer figures. I would look at, but um, between those two types of figures, I, you know, I think they're pretty helpful and, and handy when you're handicapping and judging a horse. Um, you can't live and die by figures, that's for sure. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot that um, can't be read on paper, um, but it, it's certainly a useful tool. Yeah, and as, as uh, with your father being on the training side and you being the assistant trainer, do you guys look at like when a horse fires a big number, is it kind of, oh, maybe we need a, a little more time before this one? Do you, you factor that in? Um, not necessarily. I mean, if it's a really gutty effort, like we watched the replay of Frank's Rockhead, yeah. I mean, you, you, you really have to, you know, try to keep weight on them. And um, you, you really don't want to squeeze the lemon dry, so to speak. And, um, you know, a lot of people are big on, you know, running too fast. I know Bobby Frankel used to, yeah. you know, get upset if, uh, you know, a horse would run too fast. And, you know, there, there could be something to be said about the bounce. But um, we just sort of, you know, watch the horse and, and, and you know, judge the tangibles of, of, like, how, you know, they came out of it. And, uh, so, you know, there, there is something to be said about it, but, you know, we just you know, don't read into it. Sure. So uh, you mentioned you're across the street at the Harness Track. People may not realize, but at every season there's a number of thoroughbred uh, trainers and horses uh, right across the street at the harness track. We're here uh, just in front of Clare Court, and so uh, we see a lot of those horses come over. Talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of being over on the, the harness side in the barns over there and what that's like. Well, it's it's great. We've been going there for probably over 10 years. Um, Todd Pletcher has uh, a large stable over there, Chad Brown, us. This year it's not quite as full over there as in years past, sort of like how it is over here on the Naira side. Um, but you know, it, it allows us to keep more horses in Saratoga during the race meet, and uh, we've had a lot of success running out of that barn. So it's been you know useful for our operation. Yeah, as I say, a lot of people may not realize that the harness track is used like that unless you come in the morning and get stopped by the traffic for the sure. horses walking over. Um, and as I say, Clare Court is right behind us. You guys ut utilize Clare Court? Uh, no, uh, generally no. Uh, we'll stick to the main track, and when we you know work on the turf, we'll walk over to Oklahoma. Um, but there are many trainers who use Claire Court. I know Linda Rice uses it quite a bit. Um, Al Stahl, I see out here. Yeah, a lot so. of trainers say it's just uh, mentally, it's a little bit different for sure. the horse. Sure, I mean, you know, for the odd horse that's, you know, tough, maybe out on the main track, you bring them out here and it lets them down a little bit. Um, it doesn't work for every one of them, but uh, certainly a special case, it could be useful. Uh, talk about, have you gotten feedback from some of the riders or just personal feedback on uh, the track was resurfaced this year, the main track? And from what I've heard, uh, there have been positive reviews. What, what are 
Uh, your feedback. Uh, so far, I have nothing negative to say. I mean, the times working horses are pretty quick. I mean, I think you can't really, you know, uh, judge a 47 work, you know, off, you know, paper. It, you know, you have to know that it's playing a little bit quicker. Um, so it'll make, you know, a lot of horses maybe look a little better on paper. But, uh, you know, everything we've worked has come back well and, you know, so far so good. So um, I'm happy with, you know, what Naira's done with the new surface. Yeah, very good. Riley, we'll let you, we'll let you get back to work, but I uh, wanted to, to plug in a great start for the for the stable, uh, for the operation with uh, the Grade 1 Coaching Club American Oaks kicking off the season. And certainly wish you and, and your father and the whole team a lot of good luck going forward. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Riley Mott, uh, assistant trainer to his father, Bill Mott. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up for this Sunday edition of Loose on the Lead. Stay tuned. Where's the best place to find your favorite teams, your favorite food, daily drink specials, and wagering on live horse racing? Legends Field Sports Bar, 711 Central Avenue, Albany. Get your game on day or night with 75 flat screen TVs, tournament style pool tables, a private banquet room, and live horse racing. So if someone asks you where's the best sports bar in the capital region, tell them Legends Field Sports Bar, inside the Clubhouse Race Book, 711 Central Avenue, Albany. Here in upstate New York, no one provides bettors with more wagering options than Capital OTB. Our network of branch and easy bet locations stretches from the mid-Hudson Valley all the way to the Canadian border and west to central New York. So whether you need to place a bet, fund your Capital Bets account, or watch the next big race, all the action is just around the corner. A full list of our branch and easy bet locations can be found online at CapitalOTB.com. Capital OTB, the better and most convenient choice for wagering in upstate New York. No matter where in the world you are, the excitement of wagering on horse racing is just a click away. You'll get live streaming, past performances, race replays, our virtual tote board, analysis and selections from professional handicappers, a simple, safe, and secure wagering platform, and best of all, you get track prices. CapitalOTBBet.com. Bet any place, anytime at CapitalOTBBet.com. And be sure to download our new mobile app from the iTunes Store or Google Play. Welcome back to Loose on the Lead on this Sunday morning. Seth Merrow in the studio, and uh, Steve Bick was on earlier by phone. I'm just trying to pull up my uh, promos for today so we can we can promo you up here. And now I have them, uh, and I'm just I wanted to bring it up because I think there's promos down at the race book uh, this afternoon. Yeah, double promo at the race book. Uh, Hundred dollar winner bet and a match bet contest this afternoon down at the race book. 711 Central Avenue in Albany. Um, also, want to continue to remind you that I'd uh, love to have you sign up and play along with us. Again, no fans at the track, so you're not playing from home. Or, hey, if you have the, the account and you, you app on your cell phone or your tablet, you can be out on the golf course playing for all that counts or out by the pool or whatever. But go to uh, capitalotv.com or capitalotvbet.com. There's a sign-up or a join link. Fill out the appropriate information. Uh, and take advantage of the, the July bonus. Uh, once you uh, sign up, if you deposit $200, as soon as you bet double that amount before the end of the month, you get the uh, original deposit refunded to you. So some free money available there for uh, the, the new account holder. So keep that in mind as well. Saturday syndicates, uh, I do want to continue to remind you of that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there is a uh, promo running, and I, I'm just looking because sign-ups are Sunday through Thursday. So the sign-ups for this upcoming week's Saratoga Syndicate should be underway today and go through Thursday. But 20 people are selected. Those 20 people have to put $25 into the pot. So that adds up to $500. Then Capital OTV puts in another 250 and all the folks that are in the syndicate then send their picks in for the pick five, and a consensus is formed among, amongst the team, and a $750 pick five ticket is put together next Saturday. And if it wins, the team splits it up, and we all know the pick five can be very, very generous. So uh, take a little, a little shot at maybe getting on the team. Again, check out the website for more information on the Saturday Saratoga Syndicate. Should be a lot of fun throughout the meet. Also, uh, we are on the road uh, throughout the 
the season. Do want to keep you uh, inform informed about that as the week goes along. We uh, throughout the meet, we will alert you to where we are coming up. But we'll be at various places like uh, Saratoga National, Bailey's Diamond Club Grill, uh, the Embassy Suites. It should be a lot of fun. Yesterday, we were across the street at the Horseshoe for an on the road event. A nice crowd over there. Um, picnic tables spaced out, and it's a nice way to to uh, kind of enjoy. Um, the races from Saratoga, even though you can't go to the track, you can still get some Saratoga uh, atmosphere. And you see there, our next visit will be to Saratoga National, Prime at Saratoga National. I think you may want to call ahead. I think Saratoga National is actually taking reservations for their situation uh, because they're open uh, throughout the meet uh, on race days with uh, some watch parties out there, and I think they are taking reservations. So you may want to check in with Saratoga National in regards to next Saturday afternoon. But we will be there. Also, we'll have a bankroll uh, there as well. So it should be a lot of fun. Gonna, we are looking forward to our visits throughout the season to the various venues around Saratoga. And again, given that the first one was yesterday, I think they're all going to go very well because there was a nice crowd there yesterday watching the races at the Horseshoe, and we enjoyed our visit over there quite a bit. All right. I'm going to wrap things up. Seems early. I haven't gone 20 minutes over. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up on this Sunday morning, Loose on the Lead. Week one of OTB TV is in the books. We still have racing this afternoon before week one at Saratoga is in the books. But week one of uh, Capital OTB TV, and I, I thought uh, things went swimmingly. We, we kind of figured out uh, congratulations or, or thank you to Brian in the control room who uh, we were working last week when we came in and earlier this week to kind of come up with the two box, which I think so we can socially distance with the guests. But last week, if you saw when we were our initial uh, try at it, we were just doing the two shot on the regular camera. And we were we were kind of falling off the edges of the TV frame. So and now we've gone to a, a two box, which has us sitting um, in in a socially distanced fashion. And it. It looks good on the screen. And again, our, our man Brian Dorenzo kind of played around and came up with that uh, the other day. So uh, thanks for that. And as I say, it, 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 I said at the beginning it would be a work in progress. It has been a work in progress. But I think week one is, has gone well and we figured some things out. And uh, hopefully also, because that's what the game plan is, we've made it uh, informative and entertaining. And uh, we will continue to do so throughout the remainder of the meet. And hopefully uh, we give you some information that allows you to cash some tickets. But again, have some fun and learn some things and uh, bring the track to you because that's what it's all about this season here on Capital OTV TV. So, again, winding things up for this Sunday morning. Next in here, as far as the OTV uh, staff and whatnot, we'll be back on uh, 9 o'clock Wednesday morning with handicapper support. So, I'm going to wrap it up for Sunday. Of course, lots of great racing action Sunday afternoon and into the evening here on Capital OTV TV. But as far as here on the set, we'll see you Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. for the Handicappers Report. From the backstretch at Saratoga, this is Loose on the Lead with Steve Bick and Seth Merrill. Loose on the Lead is sponsored by 